live. I'm so excited that I'm finally filming this and finally doing it because I know that there are so many of you at home who have followed me um, on my Instagram and on my blog who just can't come to one of my classes because you don't live in London or maybe uh, you're a beginner and you just don't feel confident enough to come to a class, which I completely understand. Um, but no worries because I'm filming for you today and flowing alongside you in a beginner's yoga flow. So if you're a beginner, then this is going to be perfect for you because I'll be talking through things quite slowly. We'll be going through some more of the simple yoga moves, but nothing is really simple in yoga because there's so much to think about. So just go with the flow. If you're not a beginner, it's all good. You can still do this because I'll hopefully be giving some really good tips on just what to do with your hands, what to do with your feet, because there's so much that goes into yoga that we don't even really think about when we see someone flowing away. So yeah, thank you so much for watching and let's make a start. So we're going to start by coming down into Supta Baddha Konasana, which is lying down on your back and you're going to have the soles of your feet together and make your legs into a diamond shape. So just come to lie down. We won't be staying down here for too long, but I just want to take a moment to really ground us. And if this is too sore for the knees, you can always prop some blocks underneath the thighs or maybe just even bring the knees up to face the ceiling. Don't even worry about it. Okay, guys. So start to close down the eyes and let's take our left hand over our heart centre, so just to the centre of the chest, and our right hand can fall on our stomach. And I just want you to start tuning in to your breathing. So noticing that rise and that fall of those hands as you inhale through the nose, and as you exhale out through the mouth. So at the moment you're inhaling through the nose and exhaling out through the mouth. And from the awareness and the breath, I want you to start spreading that awareness out into your physical body and just begin to notice how you're feeling today, just energetically speaking, or perhaps you're working with an injury, you feel a bit of tension somewhere. Whatever it is, just being an observer, try not to have really an opinion on any of that, but just noticing, just having an awareness of your physical body. Okay guys, let's take an inhale together through the nose, and then we're gonna sigh it out through the mouth. And inhale, and just let that air fall out. And again, inhale through the nose. Final time, exhale out through the mouth. Perfect, guys. Okay, start to open up your eyes just nice and slowly. And then bring those hands to the outside of your thighs. And just bring the knees together. Take your time, there's no rush. And then let's bring the knees now into the chest. And just give yourself a very well-deserved hug for taking the time out of your day to pop this video on, get on your mat and just do something for you. Okay guys, let's bring those hands behind the knees and we're going to walk up and down the spine, just slowly at first and then as you start to gain some momentum, we'll come up into a tabletop position. Okay guys, so we're just rolling until you can come up nearly there and cross over the ankles and bring yourself into a tabletop position. So in our tabletop, we're just going to make sure that our hands are directly underneath our shoulders, our knees are underneath our hips, and we'll just warm up through the spine. So we'll take some cat cows. So on your inhale, start to lift up the tailbone, the stomach drops down, the shoulder blades pull back, and you shine your chest forward. And then as you exhale, again, moving from the tailbone first, you tilt the tailbone downwards, tuck the stomach in, start to arch through the spine, and then tuck the neck in. Inhale, you draw the tailbone up, stomach comes down, chest opens, and your gaze comes forwards. 
and then again, inhale, tilt that tailbone under, start to lift the spine up towards the ceiling and tuck the chin under. And now guys, just close down the eyes. I want you to move through these cat cows in your own breath. So with the eyes closed, it just means that you can really start to tune into where your breath is at. Try not to change the speed or the pace of your breathing and just move with every inhale, pulling into that cow pose. And then as you exhale, start to lift the spine up, coming into your cat. So that's really what this kind of yoga is all about. You're connecting the breath with the movement. And then through that connection, maybe we can make a little pathway and connect with the mind as well. And that's when that like good, juicy, amazing feeling through yoga comes from. It's that connection, taking the time to actually be really fully aware of what our body is doing, both in terms of our breathing and our movement really good for our brains, really good for our souls. It just gives us a little bit of chill time, makes us feel nice and calm. That's why yogis tend to be so zen. I don't know, maybe you've met a yogi who isn't, but just generally speaking, it's a nice stereotype. Okay guys, from here, start to bring the knees nice and wide on the mat, bring the big toes together, and just start to sit yourself down into the heels. And we're coming into child's pose, so you're forehead is going to start coming down onto the mat. And just start to lengthen out through your breath now, making sure that you're not holding any tension in the neck or the shoulders. And just really allow yourself to relax down here. And I just want you to know that throughout this class, if you ever feel that I don't know, things are getting too much. You can come down into this child's pose. You can even pause the video and you can just take some chill time. Um, you know, people take child pose all the time in yoga classes and no one cares. No one is going to be like, oh my God, they're taking child's pose because it doesn't matter. Child's pose is your safe place. And we all know that yoga can sometimes get a little bit too much. Life can get too much. So yeah, just whenever you're feeling, just come down into a child's pose and just take a minute, recompose yourself and then when you're ready, you can go back to your flow. So from here guys, we're going to start pushing up into our downward facing dog. We're going to take our time doing that. So I want you to start to lift yourself up and just bring the knees in together, tuck under the toes. Start to bring your hands out nice and wide, and I really want you to spread those fingertips super wide, okay? And before we start to lift that tailbone up, what you're going to do with your down dog is you're going to be putting most of your pressure through the thumb knuckle and the index finger knuckle. So when you're pressing your hands into the mat, that's where most of the weight in the hands is going, and that just allows the shoulders to relax, the neck doesn't get too sore, and I mean, it's just best, better for alignment, okay? So yeah, walking those hands out towards the top of the mat, but not all the way up to the top. Spread those fingers nice and wide. Press the knuckles of the thumbs and the index fingers into the mat so you have a nice, stable, sturdy base. Make sure those toes are tucked under. Sit the sitting bones back into the heels, press into the mat and just start to peel your tailbone up towards the sky. Okay guys, and the aim here, and I say aim lightly because I personally feel like there shouldn't exactly be aims in yoga, but anyway, the aim is to work on getting the heels down towards the ground, but please don't worry if your heels don't reach. You might be able to see my heels don't reach, and yeah, I'm a yoga teacher, and it doesn't matter, okay? And you just want to lift the tailbone up. You want a nice straight line, really from the middle finger, working all the way up through the arm, into the shoulder, coming into the back, and taking its way all the way up to the tailbone. So the priority is a nice straight spine, straight legs, heels down on the mat, and not your priority, okay? So let's take a round of breaths here together. So we're going to inhale through the nose, 
Exhale out through the mouth. And again, inhale. And exhale. Final time. Remember that you're alone in your house. You can make as much noise. Inhale. And exhale. Perfect, guys. Okay. Let's start to lift up nice and high onto our toes. And we're just going to walk our feet up, taking little baby steps, coming into our forward fold, or what we call our Uttanasana. So you can have your feet maybe hip width distance apart here, if that's comfortable. And just make sure that the crown of the head is pouring all the way down onto the mat. So if I was going to put some water at the top of your spine, it would run all the way down and just come off the crown of your head. Okay, on your next inhale, making sure you've got a slight bend of those knees, we're going to inhale to rise all the way up to standing. Keep that neck nice and relaxed, the head stays tucked in, and as you start to lift up, the head can lift and bring the shoulders up as well. Just take a roll of the shoulders back. Let's do that again, so it feels so good. Inhale, lift those shoulders up around the neck, and exhale. So your shoulders are really pulled back, you're shining your chest forwards, and the palms of the hands going to face towards the front of the room. You can either have your feet hip width distance apart or you can bring your toes to touch at the top of the mat, heels slightly apart. In a moment we're going to lift our hands up towards the ceiling but just because of the dimensions of a film you're not going to be able to see my hands but when I'm lifting them up I'm going to be joining them. You don't necessarily have to if you can feel your neck really crunching up then just keep your hands apart like this. It doesn't mean you're a mad yogi or anything like that. So, keep that micro bend of the knees. As you inhale, start to lift your arms up towards the ceiling, gaze follows the hands. And then as you exhale, we're going to fold up the hips and swan dive all the way down, coming back into that Uttanasana. And then your inhale takes you into halfway lift. So you can either have your hands on the floor here, so you want a nice straight spine, so hands on the floor, or your other option is to bring hands to shins. And you can have a slight bend in the knees here as well. People always try to get super straight legs, but don't worry about it. So, taking your hands to wherever is comfortable, and then exhale, we fold. Then we plant the hands, and we're gonna step back into high plank here, and just hold this high plank for a few moments. If you wanna come down onto the knees, then go for it. Okay guys, let's inhale here. On the exhale, drop your knees, untuck your toes, and you're gonna keep your elbows in super close and bring yourself all the way down onto the mat. Checking that your hands are underneath the shoulder blades. Inhale, peel yourself up to a baby cobra. Don't worry about, you know, coming super high. Just take it so it's comfortable. And then we'll tuck those toes under, press the hands down into the mat, Sit back into the heels and then lift that tailbone back up to your down dog. We've got five breaths here and what we just went through nearly is a sun A or a sun salutation A. So we're trying to get the sun out, although the sun at the moment is red because of that, is it hurricane Ophelia? It's very weird outside. But anyway, okay guys, one more breath here. And then in a sec, we'll finish off our first sun salutation A. Okay, so on the next inhale, bring your gaze towards your hands and either walk like you did before, or maybe step your right foot up and then your left coming back into that Uttanasana, that forward fold. Inhale, we come to that halfway lift, so straighten the spine. Exhale to fold. And then on this inhale, bring yourself all the way up to standing, arms come all the way up above the head, and as you exhale, bring the hands to heart centre. Okay guys, so that was your sun salutation A, now we're going to come into sun salutation B. Okay, so hands are at heart, oh, sorry guys, hands are at heart centre. Inhale, start to lift those hands up, exhale, Folding at the hips, bringing yourself down. Inhale, we halfway lift. Exhale, plant those hands. Step back to your high plank. And then exhale, we drop those knees 
untuck the toes and start to come all the way down. Inhale, we come to our cobra and then exhale, pushing back to your down dog. Okay guys, on your next inhale, start to lift up the right leg, keep the hips square to the ground and then as you exhale, draw the knee into the chest, you're going to place the foot in between the hands. Keep that back heel nice and lifted and inhale, start to lift yourself up, coming into a crescent lunge. And if you've already done some sun salutation Bs before and you're like, this is not a sun salutation B, this is what I would tend to do in a beginner's class. This is my beginner's version of a sun salutation B. Okay, because as you might learn in yoga, there's not really right and wrong, there's just right and left, okay? So this is my version of a sun salutation B. So in your crescent lunge, the front knee is going to aim to be directly over the ankle, but you don't want to bring it forward, so you only want it to be over the top of it. Back heel is nice and lifted, hips are tracking forwards, and arms are lifting up. Okay guys, one more inhale, lift a tiny bit taller, and as you exhale, sweep the hands all the way down onto the mat, and set the right foot back, coming to your downward facing dog. I've got some stuff on my top somehow. As you can tell, I'm doing this in one take. I'm not, um, I'm not gonna be editing it that much because I can't do, you know, I can't edit my yoga classes in real life, so you just get to listen to exactly what I'm gonna be saying. Anyway, guys, let's inhale, lift up the left leg this time. Again, keeping those hips square. As you exhale, take the knee into the chest first. And then step the foot in between the hands. If you're like, girl, my foot is not coming to the top of that mat, you can grab hold of it and just give it a little push, okay? That's all you need to do, there's no problem. Okay, inhale, start to lift yourself up nice and tall. Again, reaching those hands high, checking in with the stomach, making sure that you've got some engagement in those abdominal muscles. And then on your next exhale, sweep the hands all the way down, stepping yourself back to high plank this time. Let's drop those knees, untuck the toes, come all the way down. Inhale, open the chest, tuck the toes under, and come back to your down dog. Okay guys, bring your gaze up to meet the hands, and either walk or maybe step up into that Uttanasana. And then we inhale, halfway lift. Exhale to fold. And then inhale to lift yourself all the way up to centre. And then exhale to bring those hands down to the chest. Okay guys, we're just going to move into a little bit more of a flow now. So we're doing some different moves, moving away from the sun salutations. But we'll be going into it exactly the same. So, keeping that slight bend of the knees, Inhale, open those arms nice and wide, bring them up towards the ceiling, exhale to fold. Inhale, halfway lift, exhale, plant the hands, come back to your high plank. We'll be keeping the knees down in our chaturanga throughout the entire video. If you can do a full chaturanga at home, by all means go for it, otherwise just follow my lead. Let's bring those knees down, come all the way down onto the mat. Inhale, we lift the chest, tuck under those toes, push yourself back to your down dog. Okay guys, inhale, start to lift up the right leg. Exhale to sweep it down, place the foot in between the hands. We're keeping the left hand plugged down into the mat here, and as you inhale, sweep the right arm, open up over that front knee. Perfect guys, sweep that right hand back down, and then as you inhale, come up to that crescent lunge. And then from here, we're going to drop the back heel and open up into our warrior two. So our hips are actually going to be open in this one as opposed to our crescent lunge. So again, we're aiming to have that knee over the top of that front ankle. And you kind of want the front heel to be in line with the arch of this back foot. So back leg is straight, front knee is bent. You're pressing down into the mat on the pinky side of that back heel. And then you lift up your arms and take your gaze over that front hand. Standing nice and tall, 
externally rotating that front thigh to keep yourself nice and strong. You can even maybe have a little bit of engagement in the glutes. So this is your warrior two. And then from here, start to reach forward like you're trying to touch the wall in front of you. Flip the palm upwards, and as if you're sweeping the air back behind you, bring the left arm down onto the left thigh, and start to lift that right arm up nice and high, coming into your reverse warrior. And with every inhale here, I want you to imagine that you're breathing space into those front ribs. So as you inhale, you can reach a tiny bit taller. Perfect, guys. From here, start to bring yourself back to your warrior two. And we're going to straighten up that front leg. And now, you can either just keep your feet as you like, but some people like to walk the back foot in slightly, we're coming into Trikonasana pose. So, arms stay out nice and long, same motion as before. You reach forwards first, and then you rotate this right arm coming down. And then this left arm lifts up. And the motion that you're going for here is you're trying to bring the left hip back, and the right hip forward. So imagining that you're a piece of bread in the toaster and you're trying not to get burnt, you're a yogi piece of bread, yogi piece of toast. Sorry, terrible jokes, but they're, they're going to be coming. Uh, if it feels comfortable for you, you can gaze up to that top hand, or you can just keep your gaze forwards, whatever works for your neck. Okay, guys, on your next inhale, lift yourself back up to your warrior two, so you're bending that front knee. As you exhale, windmill both arms down either side of that front foot. Come onto the ball of that back foot. Make sure those hands are planted and we step back to our high plank. And then drop those knees, bring yourself all the way down. Inhale to open the chest. Tuck those toes, exhale, push yourself back to down dog. Okay guys, other side, start to lift up the left leg, exhale it through, plant the foot in between the hands. This time the right hand is going to stay planted and you inhale to open the chest. Perfect guys. Okay, close that left arm back down and inhale, you lift up into your crescent lunge. And then remember, we're dropping that back heel and opening up into our warrior two. Just checking that that front heel and that back arch are in line, yeah, mine are. And then checking in with that front knee, checking in with the back side of that back foot. Okay guys, start to lean yourself forwards, flip the palm, come back into your reverse warrior. And again, use every inhale, try and find some space. Try and create a little bit more room in that left side body. Okay guys, start to bring yourself back to your warrior two, and then you're straightening up that leg, and it's your choice. You either keep that back foot where it is, or maybe you step it up a little bit more. And again, lean that body forward, take the left hand down, either resting it on the shin, or maybe placing the back side of the hand against the calf, and then lifting your right arm up. And again, you're imagining you're that piece of yoga toast in the toaster, you're trying not to get burnt. Okay guys, one more breath here. And then start to bring yourself back into your warrior two. Those arms windmill down, you move onto the ball of that back foot, step back to your high plank, drop those knees, Come all the way down to your modified chaturanga. Inhale to open the chest. Tuck those toes. Come back to your down dog. Okay, guys, you've got five breaths here. So if you want to come down into your child's pose, then go for it. Otherwise, just remembering to put that weight into the index finger and the thumb knuckles of those two hands. Keep that tailbone lifting nice and high and just come back to your breath. Have you lost it? Are you a bit out of breath or are you chilling? Just noticing, okay? Coming back to that idea of just being aware of what's going on. Okay, guys, start to bring your gaze up to meet the hands and then start to bend slightly into the knees. We're going to step or walk up 
into that forward fold. Inhale, halfway lift. Exhale to fold. And then inhale, lift yourself all the way up to standing. Hands come up above the head and then exhale, bring them down to heart centre. All we're going to do from here is we're just going to bring ourselves down to seated. There's no yoga, yogi way of doing this. Just bring yourself down, sit yourself down to the middle of the mat. We're coming into Navasana now or boat pose. So from here, first of all, let's roll the shoulders back. Chest is nice and open. We're going to aim to lift our shins up so our shins are parallel with the mat. But if to do this, you're compromising that straight spine so you're you know, hunching into the back, you can keep those feet down, okay? The most important thing is having that straight spine. So, start to come to our boat pose position. You can either keep the hands back here, or maybe you want to straighten out those arms. We're just gonna hold. That's all we're gonna do for now, just holding. Okay, guys, I want you to take your attention into your core. Is it engaged? If it's not, and start to bring the belly button in towards the spine, engaging those core muscles. And from here, you're going to straighten out the right leg. So keeping that left leg lifted and lift the right. Taking that left leg down this time and lift. And again, right one comes down. And now the left one comes down. We're going to do one more either side. We're like, this isn't a yoga move. Ah, it is, guys. Okay, final time, left leg comes down, and take a hold, okay, now, cross over the ankles, we're going to push back into our down dog, and from here, start to lift up the right leg, this time we're going to bend the knees, start to bring the heel towards the bum, so you're opening the hips up towards the side, but those shoulders are staying pretty level, with the mat and then from here start to bring the right knee behind the right wrist so you're taking that shin down onto the mat so we're going to move into our pigeon so that left foot just gently walks that left leg back i want you to take a look over your left shoulder and check that your leg isn't at a funny angle and then making sure that your hips are at an equal level if you're dipping into um, the right hip, you can bring a block just, or even a rolled up blanket or a towel underneath that right hip so that you're not sagging down. You want your hips to be nice and level. And then just slowly start to fold yourself down. Maybe your forehead can come all the way down to the mat. If not, maybe you could rest it on the hands. Again, maybe you could grab a towel. But just getting that third eye or the forehead resting down. And just start to relax into that hip. And with every exhale here, I want you to see if you can relax down into that hip a tiny bit more. So use the exhales to just release some tension. We carry so much in our hips, and I'm not making that up, it's so true. They literally take us around all the time and they get so tight and loads of stuff gets sort of coiled up in there. So just Make sure you're relaxing down into that hip, using that exhale. We're gonna stay here for a few more breaths, guys. Bear with me, I know it's not, well, I actually love this pose, but I know that quite a lot of people don't. <laughs> but just embrace it. Okay, guys, on your next inhale, slowly start to bring yourself back up. Walk those hands back, tuck under the back toes. You can walk the leg forwards a little bit if you want. And then we're just going to step back to that down dog. And just take a moment here. Maybe start to notice the differences in between, or between or in between, between the right leg and the left leg. So now that we've compressed down that hip on the right side, maybe noticing... I don't know if there are any differences. Well, there might not be, but just having a look, seeing. Okay, guys, let's start to lift up that left leg this time. We bend the knee, start to open up that hip, but make sure those shoulders stay the same level. You don't want to be lifting up that right shoulder. Okay, guys, when you're ready, let's bring that left knee 
to behind the left wrist, shin comes down, and again, you can walk the right foot back, check that that right leg is not at a funny angle, and then start to bring yourself down into your pigeon. And again, we're coming back to that idea of using the exhales to just relax down into that hip. And then maybe you can take it to another level, take it into another layer. See if you can notice the kind of thoughts that are popping into your head when you're down in this pose. And if it's like, Hannah, I hate you, if you're terrible, then that's cool, then just notice it, okay? And if you're noticing these thoughts, if you decide, no, that thought isn't doing me any good, it's not serving me, then maybe you can use your exhale and get rid of it. Try not to linger on those thoughts. See if you can use your exhale to just let it go on by. Create a little bit of space in your mind. Okay guys, one more breath. And then slowly start to bring yourself back up to seated. You're going to sit down into the left hip and then swing that right leg all the way around, extend that left leg out to meet it. We're coming into a forward fold here. So maybe you want to take some of the flesh out from underneath you, maybe you don't, I don't know. Well, either way, sit up nice and tall, push the heels away from you so your toes are not even just lifting upwards, your toes are coming back towards you. And then let's roll those shoulders back and then lift the arms up. And I want you to keep the straight spine, okay? The straight spine is your priority. I don't want you to try and like get your head down between your knees. It doesn't matter, you're doing it at home. No one's watching, it doesn't matter. And even if people were watching, it wouldn't matter anyway. Okay guys, so lifting up the arms. Inhale to lift nice and long, and then as you exhale, remembering to keep that spine nice and straight, start to fold yourself down, coming into this Paschimottanasana, or your forward fold. You keep those feet engaged, you keep that nice long spine, and hands just come to wherever they fall to, so maybe onto the calves, maybe they can reach onto the ankles, or if you're super flexy, maybe you can grab the feet, or some people can even grab a block and take a hold of it. I can't, so I won't demo, but it's possible. But just make sure that spine just stays nice and long. Take that neck, make it an extension of the spine. And just again, use that exhale. Get rid of any mental junk that you just don't need right now. Okay, guys, when you're ready, slowly start to bring yourself back up. And then start to bring yourself down onto your back. And you have an option here. This is our final pose before we come into Shavasana, our relaxation, the best bit. So you can either just bring the knees into the chest, maybe you want to rock from side to side, whatever works for you. Otherwise, we're coming into Happy Baby. So you can start to lift the soles of the feet up towards the ceiling, but I want you to check in with the spine, okay? So you don't want to be arching the spine, you want to keep the lower back plugged down into the mat, and especially this little part of your coccyx here, that needs to stay plugged down, even when you come into your happy baby, so you're not lifting your bum up, you're keeping it plugged down. Your hands come to the insides of the knees, or your arms come to the insides of the knees, sorry, and then you grab hold of the outside of the feet with your hands, and you can either stay here, or maybe you can just rock from side to side, pretending that you are indeed a happy baby. It's a great name for the pose. It's quite fun to rock from side to side. Just take a moment. Okay, guys. And then, when you're ready, bring those knees in. Everybody give yourself a very well-deserved hug. We're going to make our way down into Shavasana now, and you can just extend out the legs, maybe grab a blanket, and just try and stay here for maybe five minutes, it's really important, have the hands facing up, so the palms are facing towards the ceiling, so just nice and relaxed, let the feet 
flop out towards the sides and just close down the eyes. And we'll start with a little body scan. So we're going to start with our focus at the crown of our head and then use your inhale. Imagine that there's a globe of light starting at the crown of the head and with every inhale it just moves down a little bit further through the body and your exhale is using that light, collecting any tension and then you just breathe it out. So again, coming back to that idea of using your breath to just get rid of not just physical tension but maybe some mental stuff that just pops into your head whilst you're taking your five minutes. So you're just using that idea as you make your way down through your body. I'm going to leave you here guys. Thank you so much for watching, but please do just stay. Have some chill time in your Shavasana. It doesn't have to be super long, just maybe three minutes and then you're free to go. Thank you so much for watching. If you have any comments, any questions, just leave it in the comments below. All the details about this video, you know, maybe the poses that we went through, even to what I'm wearing, the mat where I'm filming, it's all going to be just in the little caption, the blurb, just below. So go check it out. Please subscribe. I would absolutely love it if you subscribe. Give this video a like. And yeah, just let me know what you thought. Anyway, I hope you have a fabulous day. And yeah, hopefully see you soon. Bye.